Hello everyone, my name is Dana Deep and I am the school counseling intern at Fishers High School. I just wanted to create this presentation and just go over some skills that every student can benefit from in order to succeed in school, you know, especially with the pandemic and going virtually versus in person. Some students are lacking in this area and it's not their fault. So I wanna go over some key skills for everybody to look into a little bit more and see where you can improve. So what's getting in the way? And this could be one or many things, but the ones that I have listed here are skill gaps in general, um, not knowing how to study, a possible low self-confidence, being disorganized, low motivation, or a lack of support. So we are about to dive into 10 different strategies that you can use to better your academic success. As cliche as it sounds, believing in yourself is key. Um, I think without this, then the rest sort of falls apart and having that self-confidence is crucial. So believing in your abilities that you have accumulated thus far in your life, recognizing and appreciating your individual talents. Some people may be a little bit too self-critical or compare themselves to others, but having those talents and, and feeling like you can use them to the best of your ability is is really wonderful. Developing the confidence to do well now, but also for your future. This isn't just um, something that we wanna focus on academically. I think believing in yourself can be universal and uh, can be applied to your future as well. And also keep in mind to be accountable. I think believing in yourself has a sense of responsibility to it and being accountable for your thoughts and actions is also a key point to make here. The second strategy is getting organized. Using Canvas is where all of your assignments are probably going to be posted, so keeping tabs on that or just using an assignment notebook. I do know that agendas are sold at the bookstore. Um, using a three ring binder for class notes, using different folders for each class, so keeping things color coded could be helpful. Um, having phone numbers of classmates and finding out what you're missing out on, just in case if you are absent one day, that could be very helpful. Keeping your backpack neat, this could also be for students that do have lockers. I knew that it's sort of um, slim to none these days, but at least keep your backpack neat. Getting organized before you go to bed is a big one, at least when you wake up. Everything is in its place and you don't have to worry about it the next day. And then picking one day a week to reorganize yourself in some sort of way. The third strategy is time management. This is a big one for a lot of students and they are kind of lacking in this area. So using that extra time in class, if your teacher gives it to you or getting your homework done, studying during your study hall period, if you do have one. Creating your own study plan. This can look different from person to person. You may just want to write down a to-do list for that day. How do you want to study for that upcoming exam? So on and so forth. Homework does not always mean studying. I feel like this is a big misconception. So homework, obviously you're understanding the content, turning it in for a completion, getting that graded, but studying usually is an all encompassing thing before an exam. Plan on a half an hour of homework and studying per night per subject. This may seem like a lot. Um, you can dim it down if you want to, but I would really focus on the harder classes first and prepare for things that may go wrong. This is where time management is at its key point, and this is where you can kind of brainstorm different ways of how to keep your time management skills prepared before things go wrong, if they do go wrong. The fourth strategy is success in the classroom itself. So learning how to adapt to different teachers. Now this is crucial because every semester, whether it's a year long class or a semester class, you will be getting a different schedule. So, you know, a teacher may have a reputation or what have you, but adapting to different teachers and their strategies is going to be a universal skill in the long run of just life itself. Be in school on time every day, be prepared for each class, and yes, that means studying before a test or doing homework or doing that reading assignment. Sit where you can focus most if possible. So if you focus most 
in the front of the class, ask the teacher if you can sit in the front. Limit your distractions. This could be phone use or just talking to friends around. Always do your homework and then keeping tabs on that on campus and then participate in class. I know this can be kind of scary raising your hand if you're not a talkative type, but participating in the ways that you know how and feel comfortable with can be uh, a great success in the classroom. The fifth strategy is knowing how to take and use notes effectively. So previewing material the night before um, could be of use if you wanted to take some reading and um, use that to your advantage before taking notes the next day over the material. So be an active listener. Are you only writing down what you see on the screen or board or are you actually listening to the information to what I am saying? So keep this in mind whenever you are taking notes. Take notes to help you pay attention. So whatever catches your eye, use highlighters, use posted notes, whatever works for you. Recognize important information. You may want to underline or go over something one more time. And then take notes that are easy to read. Make sure that they are legible if you are writing them down. Taking notes continued, using abbreviations for speed writing, going over your notes as soon as possible and rewrite if necessary if this is a more difficult class. Get lecture notes if you are absent. This could be from the teacher or like I said previously, getting in contact with a peer in class could be of help. Take notes while reading your textbook to help you stay focused so things can align as needed. Use an outline format or make your own study guide by writing recall questions. So this could be something that can be also used for test taking, but this is a great strategy when taking effective notes and using them. The sixth strategy is obtaining reading techniques. Now, if it's a survey, understanding titles, headings, pictures, graphs, and charts. If it's a question, turn bold-faced subtitles into questions. This can help you even during note-taking itself as well. Reading, read with the purpose of answering your questions. So read the questions before and know what you're looking for. Recite, so stop periodically to check in with your understanding. If something isn't making sense, go back. And then also just review until you feel like you have a good grasp about the content. As for the seventh strategy, it is studying smarter, not harder. So as for finding a good place to study, realize if you like a more energetic environment, such as maybe Starbucks, or possibly liking a more quiet and secluded environment, such as a library. Getting started on something easier, but don't save the most difficult assignment for last. This will probably set you up for unmotivation to even start this assignment, and you will probably procrastinate know your learning style. It could be an auditory learning style. It could be a visual learning style. Just know your style and use it to the best of your ability. Organizing your study time. So like I said earlier, using that extra time in class or using that study hall period if you do have one. But if you are unable to, find a time when you are home in the evening, set your alarm if needed, and use that study time for that one hard class especially. Know the best way to study for you, and this ties back into learning style and study time, and then also using tricks to help you memorize information. So that could be acronyms. Uh, that really helps a lot of people out, and so that way you're kind of shortening the amount of work and getting the most out of your study time. The eighth strategy is knowing how to take a test. Be prepared as much as you can. Use that study guide, use flashcards, anything that you can do to get prepared as much as possible, and then try to relax. This is a big one for a lot of people because having that adrenaline going, it's going to make everything around you a little bit more fuzzier, including your brain. Let's get that brain fog gone and relax as much as you can. 
develop a plan about how to approach the test. Now, like I said earlier, every teacher has different methods of teaching strategies that also includes their way of testing. So ask your teacher about what the test might cover, how is it going to be set up. This is a great way to mentally prepare about that test coming up. Read all of your choices. I know a lot of teachers reiterate this, but make sure to go through all of your choice options. Mark questions that you want to return to, and you don't have to spend too much time on a single problem. If you don't get it, move on. Increase your odds on multiple choice by trying to predict or estimate the answer first. Once you think that you have it, read all of your questions and choose from there. And also eliminate the choices that you know for a fact are incorrect. Test taking continued. Looking for keywords and true or false questions, improving your math test scores by possibly estimating what the answer will be, and then also showing your work. Check your answers. So at the end of the test, if you do have a little bit more time, go ahead and run through review, and you might find a couple that you accidentally messed up on. If you are in between two different answers, go with your gut. Go over the return test. So what questions did you miss and where was the information? Find it in your study guide or your book. How can you avoid missing it when studying the next time for this one test? This is a great way to prepare yourself for future tests in that one class. Test taking strategies continued. This is specifically for essay questions. Plan out your time accordingly. Write the appropriate amount, so whatever the line length is, is typically how long your answer should be, unless otherwise specified by your teacher. What is the question asking? If you're confused, ask your teacher for a little bit more clarification. Brainstorm and outline if needed. Write neatly and complete sentences. Support your point, and it's an essay, not a conversation with your friends. Open, support, closing. The ninth strategy is reducing that test anxiety. Study enough to feel confident, but not overwhelmed. This comes full circle with studying habits, learning style, how you do your notes. Once that is all said and done and you feel confident in the way that you do your notes, reviewing, so on and so forth, you shouldn't feel overwhelmed by the time the test comes around. Get a good night's rest the night before. Mentally practice going through the test and also be confident and think positively. As I said before, believing in yourself, as cliche as it sounds, is so important. The tenth and final step is to get help if needed. This may not be everybody's cup of tea to seek extra support, but let me tell you this. In life, sometimes we need a little help and that's okay. For teachers, they are the best resource. Talk to them in person or via email, and also utilize your TI time. If you were requested by a teacher, please go. Talk to your guidance counselor, talk to your peers, or get involved in study groups. Parents or other family members may be able to help out even studying. Do your own internet search and use outside tutoring professionals if needed. This concludes the academic success skills that every student can benefit from presentation. Um, hopefully any of these skills, if not all, can be of great benefit to reflect on and see what you can improve on. So if you have any other questions or concerns, you can email me missteep at ddeep at hsc.k12.in.us. Take care.